Welcome everyone to the course uh, Introduction to Biomedical Optics from Theory to Applications. Uh, in this course, uh, we will learn about the theory part of uh, biomedical optics, which is now um, very um, famously known as medical optics. Uh, in addition to the theory, we will also learn about the applications. Uh, so we will have also lab, lab structures where we will go to the lab and uh, <clears throat> see how the optical systems have been developed. Uh, uh, coming on to uh, the topic like why uh, one should learn biomedical optics. Uh, so one of the recent advances of biomedical optics uh, or medical optics uh, is the development of pulse oximeter that you already know about it right now. So in uh, COVID, all, uh, uh, pulse oximeter was used in, uh, <clears throat> uh, in a large uh, uh, amounts. And uh, usually the pulse oximeter is kind of cost like five to 10,000. But uh, due to the mass production, it kind of reduced to around 2,000 to around 1,000 now. <clears throat> uh, one more use of the biomedical optics is the imaging of the brain. So the brain is a very uh, tricky uh, place to image. For example, it has a, uh, very thick bones. So imaging within the bones is kind of very, very difficult. Uh, so people are coming up with uh, uh, <clears throat> near infrared spectroscopy tools, uh, which can actually put on top of the uh, uh, surface of the brain, and you can actually uh, use multiple optical fibers, as you can see on the screen on the right hand side, uh, <clears throat> and you can actually image the uh, the full structure of the brain. Uh, and the specific uh, uh, topic, which is known as functional near infrared spectroscopy that it understands the functioning of the brain as well. Uh, so <clears throat> presently, the technique that may be used uh, could have been ultrasound, but uh, ultrasound is not that specific uh, to uh, detect the ultrasound waves through the uh, thick bone. So optics is kind of uh, being uh, pushed as a technology that could be used within the uh, clinics per se. The next is uh, imaging of the breast. So uh, imaging of the breast presently, it is done by X-ray, MRI or CT, but X-ray is not recommended for uh, people for less than 40 years. Uh, and, <clears throat> and it's kind of an issue with the dense breast. Ultrasound is another technique that, that people use to image the uh, breast, but uh, it suffers from lower accuracy and high false positive. So people have coming up with the diffuse optical imaging to technique where they actually uh, build a system around the breast and then they image the whole breast. As you can see on the right hand side, a woman actually is lying in a prone position and uh, the breast actually goes inside a, a, a box, uh, which is in this uh, paper uh, by Shung et al. Uh, uh, mentioned as a breast box and it's connected to a source, uh, multiple sources and fibers, uh, through fibers and detectors along with the fibers. <clears throat> And it goes to a, a, a the uh, source and detection circuit, and uh, you can actually image the whole breast. What you actually see is the uh, hemoglobin concentration, uh, and there are all other concentration of the breast uh, tissue constituents of the breast. For example, you have the uh, <coughs> uh, water constituents. Uh, you have the lipid concentration. You have collagen concentration. So all of this concentration you can actually image. Another uh, place where uh, optics is coming into the uh, uh, kind of a front uh, <clears throat> is uh, the cancer margin assessment. Now, for example, uh, a woman, as you can see on the screen, is undergoing breast conservation surgery. In that case, uh, a part of the breast, which is kind of diseased, is removed, uh, as you can see over here. And not only the diseased region, but along with the diseased region, uh, adjacent normal region also needs to be removed. Otherwise, uh, if the uh, the excised breast tissue is not having any uh, normal tissue on the surrounding, for example it, example, it is having a cancerous tissue, as you can see over here, on the periphery of the excised tissue, that means that some, of, some part of the disease tissue might be present inside the breast of the patient, which could lead to the reoccurrence of the cancer. So this is not the case that we... Uh, is, is, uh, is kind of not desirable, right? So you kind of always require a margin that you see over here with the dot, uh, dashed line of around uh, one to two mm. Uh, that is an extra normal tissue that one has to remove. Uh, and that kind of assessment is known as uh, 
कैंसर मार्जिन असेसमेंट और ट्यूमर मार्जिन असेसमेंट सो ऑप्टिक्स इज बिकमिंग अ टूल वेयर यू कैन एक्चुअली अंडरस्टैंड और यू कैन क्वांटिफाई ऑन द पेरीफेरी ऑफ द टिश्यू दैट ऑल द पेरीफेरल टिश्यूज आर एक्चुअली नॉर्मल और नॉट ओके सो दैट इज वन ऑफ द टेक्निक दैट पीपल आर यूजिंग uh next where people are using biomedical optics is uh, monitoring temperature and this is again you would have used uh, you have used or you've gone through this uh, uh, during the uh, the covid 19 <clears throat> epidemic that uh, uh, touching using the uh, mercury based uh, thermometer was kind of not recommended because it you, it conduct it, it actually had a physical contact but people were starting to use the thermometer infrared thermometer which works on uh, optics based uh, um, modality and uh, it is a non contact based so you can easily uh, perform multiple uh, measurements of different different uh, <clears throat> uh, patients without actually touching it Right. so that is one of the best uh, advantage of biomedical optics uh, it is kind of non contact modality another mod uh, another uh, <clears throat> avenue where optics could be used is uh, uh, oral cancer diagnosis so in the case of oral cancer diagnosis uh, presently the clinician uh, opens the mouth uh, of the patient and this visualizes what are the uh, changes or abnormalities within, within the tissue of the intraoral cavities uh it's kind of very challenging to uh, means presently in the in the the clinician who is specifically working in a uh, government uh, settings uh, they have they have to work like continuously for 6 to 7 hours it becomes very challenging for them to uh, work with the same or uh, continued accuracy right so in such case what happens is that it becomes difficult after 5 to 7 hours or so so uh, people are coming with up uh, with uh, optical based uh, techniques to image the uh, uh, intra oral cavities of the uh, tissues uh, oral tissues so for example one of the technique is using multi spectral imaging that is you shine the light using different different light source for example uh, you first shine the light with the green color then you shine the light with orange color then you shine the light with yellow color and then you shine the light with uh, Uh, red color and then you find the light with the uh, blue color so these are the separate separate images that you have now five six images that you have now and then uh, based upon the absorption peak of specific cancer biomarkers for example hemoglobin that you want to uh, uh, quantify uh, <clears throat> the peak of the hemoglobin oxygenated hemoglobin comes around 545 and 575 that is the uh, green and the <clears throat> yellow color respectively so you can actually uh, differentiate if the tissue has higher hemoglobin or lower hemoglobin now what ha happens in the cancer is that because of the heme cycle production there is a kind of a, because of the uh, <coughs> uh, a particular enzyme known as uh, ferrochelate enzyme uh, the production of heme reduces in the case of cancer so in the tissues which is affected by cancer the hemoglobin is kind of lower as compared to the uh, normal tissues which is surrounding the cancerous regions of the tissues so if you try to image with a multiple spectral uh, multiple light source you can nicely can uh, see that the light which is uh, uh, coming out from a cancerous tissue is kind of starkly different as compared to the adjacent normal tissues right so you can actually nicely differentiate between normal and cancer uh, the thing to know is that this is a peripheral kind of a cancerous so it actually occurs on the surface of the tissue uh, one more case where the cancer occurs on the peripheral is the cervical cancer uh, cervical cancer so in this case what happens is that people are coming with optical modality again to uh, right now it's kind of more more or less the work is on white light imaging so they kind of apply a white light source which is a compound light source onto the tissue surface and then kind of image the cervix as you can see over here and from there uh, by applying acetic acid what happens is that the all the protein on the surface gets de uh, denatured now in the case of cancerous region what happens there is more protein so uh, there is more protein which is getting denatured so there is more scattering which gives you a uh, white color composition so the region which kind of white color as you can see over here those those are the region which are kind of affected 
or ab abnormal or it could be cancer for example right so uh, people are uh, specifically using colposcope uh, is the technique that are presently used uh, again a white light imaging modality and then they are introducing some kind of a uh, probe that can be uh, inserted within the vagina that is a transvaginal probe imaging probe <clears throat> so uh, so what is the scope for the students of uh, after uh, having the course on biomedical optics so there is a lot of scope so you can actually have your research career in biomedical optics or medical optics there are a lot of groups as you can see on the right hand side uh, you have uh, mit icfo uh, uh, <clears throat> biomedical photonics in Vanderbilt. So a lot of opportunities are there uh, all over, all around the world after learning the basics of biomedical optics. Uh, so not only the research career, you can pursue higher studies. If you are right now performing your or doing your undergraduates or uh, postgraduates, you can do your higher studies as well uh, in biomedical optics. And then you, in addition to this, you can also develop a new product which can lead to a startup. I will just go through the uh, books now. So these are the books that we will be covering through the course. Okay, so main book would be the uh, by the fundamental of biomedical optics. It's a very nice book by Kalorin uh, uh, Bordox. And uh, one more nice book is Quantitative Biomedical Optics Theory, Medical and Application by Irving Biggio and uh, Sergio Fantini. So these are the two main books that we will be covering throughout this course. And one more good uh, book is uh, Tissue Optics, Light Scattering Method and Instrumentation for um, uh, medical diagnosis by Valerian uh, Tushin. The th second, the third, and fourth books are uh, are kind of the legacy books that have been used uh, thoroughly till now. So uh, let me cover the course structure. So the course structure is uh, the first module would be on <coughs> uh, physics of biomedical optics. So how does the light actually interacts with the tissue? For example, I I, I just you might have everyone has a mobile phone right now. So I uh, enable my light source that is my torch over here and i shine it uh, on my uh, on my <coughs> hand or my finger now what can you actually see so you you can do this experiment with your uh, finger as well so you can use it your pinky finger and what do you see if you shine the light on your pinky finger you actually see a red color right so the next question that comes to your mind is why do you actually see the red color so this is the reason, the reasoning behind this formation of red color is what we will read uh, or learn from this course. We'll not just learn about the theory, but we'll also do a few experiments which could help you to understand and appreciate uh, biomedical optics. Uh, next, we'll talk about the theory. So the light uh, which propagates through the tissue. So it undergoes two basic uh, uh, physical uh, uh, principles that is scattering that is how much the light is being scattered away uh, and second is absorption so how much is the light being absorbed as it passes through the tissue okay so in absorption we will learn about beard lambert law modified beard lambert law uh, in scattering we we'll learn about relay scattering and my scattering next we'll talk about light transport theory in uh, turbid media so that is the Boltzmann transport equation. Uh, and then we'll apply some kind of uh, uh, approximation to uh, uh, decrease the complexity of the equation because it's kind of very complicated to solve. Another way is to solve is using a Monte Carlo approach is what we also will uh, give a demonstration on. Then we come to the uh, one of the major component of the course is optical instrumentation. So we'll talk about how to work with lasers, how to work with LEDs, uh, how to drive uh, particularly the lasers and LEDs, uh, how to drive the uh, detectors. Uh, then there are a lot of optical systems such as uh, filters and polarizers. So we'll learn about those things in detail. And then we'll talk, talk about advanced topics such as uh, diffuse reflectance spectroscopy we'll talk about uh, raman spectroscopy fluorescence spectroscopy optical biosensors and doppler spectroscopy <clears throat> and the final module would be on experimental methods so we'll do few of the ex lab experiments and then uh, multimodal imaging so we'll see uh, uh, techniques where along with optics you can actually take uh, acoustics for example so you can merge two different fields and then you can try to see how you can improve the accuracy or a resolution of the imaging uh, per se. Okay. So, uh, so I look forward for you to attend this course. Uh, thank you.